Good afternoon. Oh, I got my speakers too loud. I'm going to go change that here real quick. <clears throat> Good afternoon. We're going to go get, to get started here in just a little bit. Some of you are still tuning in. Uh, you can go ahead and leave a comment. Let me know where you're at and where you're from. We're going to talk a little bit. This is Jay from A Stitch in Time in Bemidji, Minnesota, where we are having a beautiful summer this week. It is a high in the mid to upper 70s, maybe low 80 a little bit this week. Lows in the evenings and nights down to the high 50s, low 60s. Mm. This is what we put up with 30 below all winter for. So we're we're looking forward to that. So yeah, we're ex excited about today. I wasn't sure yesterday if this show was going to happen because my little girl got into poison ivy without me knowing it, and it got all over her clothes. And then she took a nap on Papa's pillow, which meant that that night when I lay down, my eyes got all rubbed up on that. And yesterday, my eye was about half swollen shut, and I wasn't sure if this was going to work. But... Praise the Lord, I called my eye doctor and he gave me some wonderful pills that some of you know called prednisone. It's my first experience with this. And right now I feel like I can conquer the world because I enough, have enough of energy, but I am hoping to get some sleep tonight because I didn't get an awful lot last night. But we'll see how that happens. And uh, if you tune in a week from now and I'm about 300 pounds, you know it's because I'm hungry. Um, so anyways... I'm glad to be able to be here and be feeling so much better. I'm thankful that we have the medication, the ability to be able to deal with a lot of these things that for many other people do not have that. And so I need to be grateful with that. A couple of things I just want to talk about a little bit first here. Um, and then we're going to get into the lesson today on the scan and cut. And we're actually going to cut things out today, which is kind of fun to do because that's what you all want to do when you're at home too, right? And so we're going to be talking about that in a little bit. We can now have our Handy Quilter Workshop in... Uh, in October lined up and it is the registration is on our uh, website and it's also on our Facebook page. So you can click on the, uh, if you're on our Facebook page and you want to get more information, there's a link that says buy a ticket. Well, all that does is takes you to my website, which has all the information and that's where you would actually buy your ticket. This is a great workshop for those of you who are looking to start finishing your own quilts. And that's a, a sense of accomplishment for us because I remember the first quilt I did, I was as nervous as a bug at a frog festival. And it was, it made me very nervous, but it is so much fun once you get started. And some of you have enough of quilt tops that you could insulate your house several times over. And now you can actually start finishing those on your own. Some of you have been quilting for a while, and this is a great way of expanding your skill set. We have a teacher coming in from, I believe she's from Illinois this year. She is a wonderful, vivacious speaker. Uh, I talked to her on the phone the other day. Lots of joy and lots of excitement. That is October 14th through the 17th. And now there's two groups of classes. One for if you're just kind of getting started and, and don't really know all that much about it, or you just want to kind of dip your big toe in the water and see what this is like. That's the level one classes. If you've been doing some long arm quilting for a while and and you, you feel somewhat confident in that and you want to kind of take it to the next level, then level two would be the best one for, for you there. So I just put that little plug in there and something you can think about. But let's get over to Scan and Cut. And I'm going to actually switch cameras here so that you can actually see what I'm doing on the, the uh screen, but you're not going to be able to see me talking. And so I'll try and keep my hands where you can see them when I'm working with it. Uh, can you all hear me okay? I, I have my speakers turned way down, but it looks like the sound is coming through okay, um, according to my levels. If it's not, let me know quick here, and we're going to get over. So let's go over to Scan and Cut. And I'm going to be showing you some of these, a lot of these things on the Scan and Cut DX. Now, I have the knife out of my scan and cut um, CW650 or CM650, but in our move from our old store to here, I can't find my power supply. 
And we were looking frantically around for it here this afternoon, and I can't find it anywhere. So I'm not actually going to be able to show you on the screen, but I think I'll have enough of tips and tricks and show you, and I'll actually show you with a knife because that's the biggest adjustment, and show you how to actually set it up so you can do it yourself. And so I'm going to show you some of the same things on the DX, just like the buttons might be at a different place, but then you'll be able to take it and go with it from there. So let's head over to the machine and go from there. Okay, so this is the machine over here. And what I what we're going to do is we're going to cut something out today. And I am going to just go in and pick a pattern that was already in here. And I'm going to choose... Oh, let's let's do we're gonna do a um let's do a um snowflake, but there's a prettier snowflake, I think, down here. Yeah. Now it's a very intricate snowflake. We're gonna make this snowflake about five inches across. So I'm going to just take this and increase this in size. This is what we did last time on the class. If you missed that, you can go back to our Facebook page and you can uh, learn how we did this. We're going to set that to five inches and we're going to click OK. There's only one element in here, so we're going to click OK. And then we're going to set this. Now, this is the same process for all the brands, of all the uh, models of Scan and Cut when we get up to here. Now, at this point here, uh, is where we would scan in our mat. Now I'm I'm gonna do, I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna make, move my camera a little bit. Try not to get seasick on me here, but I'm gonna try and move my camera a little bit to give you a little view. Uh oh. This is this is interesting. Okay, let's try it again. I want to see, so you can see how we do this. So when I take my mat off, I, I always leave my paper, my film over top of it because that's what keeps your mat from drying out. And so it's really nice to do that. When I take it off, I just peel this off and I lay it with the upside down. So I take it and fold it over here so I don't get any dust on my table or anything. There's some static electricity that comes with this and we don't want to get that on our on our um, mat so that it, then it gets transferred to here. Now I'm going to take this piece in here and this is a piece of pretty blue, it's called electric blue fashion film and this is, again, I'm just showing using this, we're going to actually uh, work with the um, glitter flake here a little bit later and because there's some really cool things I want to show you there. Now, you could, there are several ways to get this down. We have what's called a scraper, and but we also have what's called a brayer. And I think I talked about this a little bit last time. It makes it very handy. It gets all the bubbles out much more uniformly. And then we're, we are all set to go. So now at this point, I'm going to take this over. Now, did you notice I didn't necessarily be real fussy about where I put it. I just kind of put it in the middle. And that's because I have some other, some deep gouges around here because I didn't use an automatic blade or set my blade right. And I'm going to talk about how to do that here in just a minute. So let's go over to our machine and get set up to do this. Now I'm hoping that you can see this well enough because I want, I want you to be able to see what I'm doing down here as well as on the screen. Can you see that? On the screen, uh, let let me know. Just leave a comment. Can you can you see these buttons well enough that if I'm pushing buttons here, that you know what I'm pushing? I don't see any comments here coming up. But we're just going to go ahead and keep moving on here. So I need to load my mat, and to do that, I just push it up here, just like I talked about last time. Push it up so that both rollers are snug against it, and then I press the mat button, and it automatically pulls it in. And now what it did is it pulled it in to read. It actually has these little buttons that are across the top here. You can't hardly see them on here. Those little dots tell the machine what mat I have put in here. And so now I press this little um, mat button, and it's going to scan in my entire mat. 
and it's going to show me exactly where this vinyl is so that I can play with it. Okay, so now you can see that there is this dark area here, which is where my uh, where my vinyl was put on there. And this is great, again, so that you can actually leave all of your uh, small pieces, keep your small pieces, because you can always cut things down and make them, uh, make them fit later. And now I just need to drag this in and make sure that it fits. Now I'm going to, there's a reason why I'm doing this. I'm going to pull this over here to the right-hand side a little bit. I want to leave some extra area here, and you're going to see why in a little bit. But now you can see it fits in there very nicely. And sometimes it is hard to see that background. And so you can actually change how gray this is. It might, I'm not sure how well you could be able to see that online. But you can change whether this is really dark or really light. But you just want it to be dark enough so you can see the black outlines of your design over top of it. This is where if you touch the wrench icon, it would give you the ability. So if I make a really dark background, it's so dark, it's actually full color, but I can't hardly see my black pattern on it. And so if I change that to a gray, to a, a, like a half tone, then I can see it much better. You see that? Now, if you have one of the older scan and cut machines, that wouldn't, that wrench might not be here. There might be a wrench off to the side right over here that's going to have a little wrench button that's looking like that. And that'll take you to the same place and you can go there. They just put it right here because they know what you're using here. So I'm gonna click okay. And then it says, please select, what do you want to do? Well, I'm going to cut with this. And so I click select and then I hit cut. And so it says, okay, you wanna cut. What kind of settings do you want? And so it says that it's approximately gonna take about two minutes to cut this out. Pressure is on auto because this is an auto knife blade. And the speed is set at five and the half cut is off. Now, this is heat transfer vinyl, which has a, um, a mylar carrier and your vinyl is adhered to it. So we don't wanna cut the mylar carrier or else we'll have all these little tiny pieces to try and keep straight, which is a pain. And it's impossible if you wanna do some de more detailed designs. So. I, I only want to cut through the top layer. And so I'm going to click the little wrench. And again, there's a wrench over here uh, for you, for the um, those of you who do not have the DX series. And I'm going to scroll down. And here is where my half cut is turned off. I'm going to turn it on. And I'm going to set this back to auto. And I'll explain why in just a little bit. And so up above here, there's several things. Cut speed. How fast do you want it to cut? This is handy if you're cutting something that's fairly fragile and you don't want to be quickly ripping around because that way if it starts to tear or something, you can quickly stop it before it gets to it. It also, some fabrics and some materials cut a little better at a slower speed. Cut pressure, this is full, this is the full, um, this is for the, it's currently on auto and you can also change it to a manual blade. All right, so now we're gonna click okay. And so now it has changed this. Now, you, there's this little button here that says test. Now, if you are working on one of the DX um, machines, there will be the ability to add a, uh, actually, excuse me, you'd, if you're going to do it on a different machine, you'd have to back up to here and you'd have to click add. And then there's, there's going to be some test cuts. So let's just, um, nope, I can't do that. You know, they might not have it in here because they, they don't have it. Okay. But if, if you would click add, it would take you back to the home page. And right across the top, there's going to be, uh, a, I think there's a button, or maybe it's at the bottom, it says test. And when you click the test cut, it gives you four different types of cuts that you can do with it. So um, that's where I'm, I'm just trying to get at with you. So I want to do a test cut because I'm actually going to show you how to change the blade in here. I've been doing a lot of cutting in my... Um, my blade and it's getting kind of dull and that's why I had to crank that pressure up so much and so I'm going to take the blade off of here and change it I'm going to show you how to do that here while we work with that but so I need to add a test cut now notice what it did I don't know if you can see that up there or not um, 
And let's see here. Maybe someone's saying maybe a bit closer. Okay, I'll try and drop this down here for a little bit yet. Oh. All right. And so that is, um, so I want to do a test cut. Now you can see there's a little triangle that they inserted over here. That is for me to test whether it's going to cut this whole thing correctly. You don't want to have to cut this whole thing and then realize that you cut the whole way through or that you didn't cut deep enough. And so you need to make sure that it's set right. So I can take my little, my little icon, my little stylus here. Actually, I, I got to do it this way. I got to press move. It's hard for me to do this when I'm not right over top of it uh, to do it. So I'm going to, oops, oops, I want this on the vinyl. And I just, I'm just moving it up out of the way. Sometimes if you have big letters, like you have a let, big capital letter D, you can put this in the middle of the D so that you can don't have to waste any more space. I have extra stuff here today, but we're just going to work with that here. Now I click OK. Now I would be ready to cut, except that I'm, I need to change my blade. So let, let me show you how this works. Can you? Hope that that's that's in focus. So this is the uh, this is the auto blade that comes with the DX, and this is a manual blade. I'm going to move this over here just a little bit so that the light is a little better. So this is the auto blade, and this is the one that we would use for our DX machines that'll automatically sense how much pressure it needs to cut through something. This is the manual blade which we've had on all of our prior models of. Uh, scan and cut. The, to change them is exactly the same. We just hold this and unscrew this blade. Unscrew this little cap on top here. This is just a spring-loaded spring little cap. And the blade is right there. Now the blade is spring-loaded. See that? It just, it just stays in there. And I need to take that blade out. I'm going to put it down on the table. Here is my new blade. It comes in this little cap. Now, what I do with the old blade, I may not throw it away because there's times I'm cutting paper and that cuts really easy compared to this vinyl. And so I might save that for something like that. And then I can save this blade for that. That's why sometimes people get several of these holders. So they have one labeled for paper and one for, uh, for vinyl. Vinyl is something that your blade will last a long time if you only cut heat transfer vinyl. But once you start cutting other things like paper and uh, cork and um, glitter flake and some of those things, it tends not to want to cut the vinyl quite as well. So I pull this off and I just take this. Uh oh, did I get the wrong blade? Hang on. No, you know what? I got the wrong holder. <laughs> that is the thin cut holder. This is this is the thin cut blade for thin things. And I want this blade. This is the one I need to change. And so I pull that one out. And it just snaps back in place. Okay. And then if you, I don't know if you can see this up here, you push down on it, the blade comes out. Now I'm going to put that in the machine just like we would normally would. Now this one is would be the same way. We would unscrew this the whole way, and then there is your blade, and this one's also spring-loaded. So it's the same thing. So now that I have adjusted my blade, I need to, I need to figure out where to set my pressure uh, for this new blade on this machine. So I'm going to do a test cut, and I'm going to leave all the settings on auto, which should be pretty close. And so now I'll hit cut or start. Now, I'm going to scoot this camera front here because you're not going to be able to see what I'm doing if I don't. Okay. 
So the, it, what it did is it made a little cut right here. And I'm going to try and see if I can get it. Look at that. It peels right off. But it didn't quite cut cleanly in the corners, okay? It looks like it could have cut a little bit deeper. And so I'm going to go back to my settings. Let's see if I can do this so I can... I'm trying to do this one-handed here, or one person, because I don't have anyone else back here. Um, they're out helping front, helping in front today. And I'm going to say test again, because it didn't do it quite as well as I wanted to. So now I'm going to go into my settings, and I am going to say uh, cut pressure is going to be, we're going to increase that one, and the half cut pressure, we're going to increase one. Now, I could just leave the one the same, there we go. And now let's move this over a, a little bit. Click OK. And now let's start it again. Now again, I'm going to take this and pick that off. And you want to see how well it, come, it comes off, and it comes off pretty cleanly there. Now, the biggest thing is I want to make sure I didn't cut through that Mylar carrier. And so this time, I'm going to, now I'm going to take my, can you see this down there? I'm going to take my little spatula. And it's hard for you to see it, but that spatula, the, the Mylar carrier came off with it. I did not cut through, oops, through the carrier. It, it, st it still is there. If I had set this too high, it would have cut through both layers and leaving the thing in place. So I think that's going to be good enough for me. I am going to say, let's go ahead and cut. And that is going to uh, start cutting that out for us now. Now, it's going to take it a little bit to do that. So I want to talk about... Um, now we had that that setting there where it was just a a knife with the auto blade. What do you do if you have a manual blade? So this is a manual blade, and normally we would we would have to adjust this depth setting as well. You would still set your pressure settings inside, kind of like what I did. But now you on this one you have to set your knife blade. And so the to set these, the easiest way to do this is you crank this the whole way down till till it hits a stop. And then you back it up to the number you want because when you're down here at zero, there's no blade. Or it's just, I can barely feel a scratch on the end there. And then you set the depth by where you turn this. And so this can be a little bit of a, of a guessing game on where you start. That's one of the reasons why people like the newer Scan and Cut is because you don't have to guess where to set this. And when I first got my Scan and Cut about uh, six years ago, I got it out of the box. And me being a good guy, I didn't read the instructions. I just got it out and say, oh, this got to be easy. And oh, I'll probably set it in here to three and a half or four somewhere. And, and, and I just slapped a piece of paper in there and I proceeded to cut right through my mat. And I was not happy. I was like, what? This is crazy. I just ruined a $20 mat. Well, it, if, I, if I would have taken the time, if I had been really excited about this, I would have stopped and realized that there is a sheet that tells me what to set all these things at. And I'm just going to run through this a little bit um, so that you can see how this works. Where did my little stylus go? Here we go. Um, and this is for all of those of you who have a manual um, machine that with a manual cutter, like I was just showing you there. Let's say you're going to be working with uh, fabric, like thin cut, or actually let's start with paper. You're going to say you're going to be working with cardstock. You want to cut out some things for your scrapbooking. Okay. You can use either your, uh, your standard mat, which has the turquoise lettering on it, um, or you can use a low tack adhesive mat, which is, has the turquoise. And see, but that says only when cutting slick paper. You know, it's just really, really slippery. So we, we, you could use either one of those mats. Okay, let's keep going here. Which blade do you use? Do you use the, the big purple one, like you can use for cutting um, balsa wood and things like that? Or do you use the standard cut blade, which is the turquoise? 
Well, this is saying that you want to use a standard cut blade. All right, let's just keep going over here. And then it says blade scale setting. That is this number. Where do you start at with this one? Well, this one says start at four. So I'm going to turn this until it's lined up with four. And then the pressure setting, this is what's inside your machine. That should be set at zero. So it's very important that we know which setting is which. And so this is a very handy sheet. We, oh, that just went to the floor. Let's try this again. So there is, um, there is also plastic sheeting. We have vinyl. We have magnet, magnets, we have stickers or ceiling. There's a lot of different things on here. And what this is, is a great place to get started. Now, again, your knife is going to be different. So this is only a place to start. And when you make your first cut, it goes, whoa, that was way too deep. You can back this up or decrease your pressure. And, and, so you can, and then what I do is I have a spreadsheet that I have on my computer, or you could have just a little chart, like a spiral notebook, and you say, for fashion film, I set my blade at, um, at 2.5 for a half cut and pressure at zero. And that way, when you come back next time, you know what to dial it into that's gonna cut pretty much just the right way. So if you do not have this sheet, or you can't find it, or you know it got misplaced, leave me a message on Facebook saying, hey, I'd like that uh, cheat sheet, and I will send it to you. Uh, it's a P I'll send it to you as a PDF file, and you can print it off on your own, and that'll be my little have a good day for you. Um, because I want to take the mystery out of this. this. These are great machines, but I want to, um, but well, we have to get started using them if we're going to make that happen. So now I'm going to take this mat out, and I'm going to just press this, and it comes off, and then... I'm going to use my little tool and you start peeling up there. And there it's all ready to go. Now, I'm gonna, I'll, I'll show you how some weeding tips on that a little bit. As long as I got the camera over here and so we don't have to take too much time, I'm going to take and I'm going to put down a piece of this glitter flake because I want to show you another tool that is really handy uh, when you're working with stuff like this. Sometimes when you're cutting things out, it's really hard to see where the lines are. And I want to show you how to get past that. So I'm just going to put this down here and load my mat back in. I'm going to click OK, and I'm going to back up here. And I'm going to scan this in here real quickly, and because I want to see where that new pattern is. One of the biggest mistakes we oftentimes makes with, make with these scanning cuts is that we, we forget to test. You know, we get so so much in a hurry, and then we start with a new material, and we sometimes forget to do that. Now, I can see that I'm going to have to resize that down. Oh, too bad. We, too bad we don't have a resizing tool. Well, if you don't think we do, then you need to go back and watch the last video, because I'm going to just resize this real quickly. Object edit. I'm going to go to resize. I'm going to take this down here so that it fits. I'm going to put this up here a little bit higher. We're going to click OK. We're going to click OK because we are just rolling today. Let's get going. We're going to go to cut again. Uh-oh. This is a different material. This is glitter flake. You know what? I should do a test cut. So I'm going to do a test cut. And now i got to see where is that. You may not be able to see that up on the screen there, but I'm going to take this. And this time I'm going to put it over here. And we are going to click start. And now it's going to do the test cut. And again, I don't know if you can see this or not. Oh, boy, I can barely see where to cut this out at. Let's see once. Oh, yeah, that came off nice and clean. And let's take this look underneath here. Ah, the shiny stuff is still there. In fact, it almost cut through the shiny stuff a little bit. I think we'll be okay, but uh, I'm just going to let it go for that right now. 
Uh, and we'll see once what happens in the future. Actually, you know what I might do? I might go and we're going to say, I'm just, I'm just going to click OK and we're going to do it. Because I want to get this done. Now, wait, it's, it's going to be impossible for you to see it on the camera, but it's, it's almost impossible to see the cut lines on this material because Glitter Flake just heals up so, so well that it's hard to see where you're going. Well, some of you got, when you got your machines, you, they came with these little markers and a little pen thing. I'm going to move this over again so that you can um, see a better, a little better light. And it came with this little pen holder. And so you're kind of like, well, what do I do with this? Well, this can be done with a lot of things. You know, I could take this exact same um, uh, design and just use a marker and draw it on a card. And now I've driven, drawn a beautiful snowflake. You know, so you can do things like that with it. The thing I like, because my daughter makes more beautiful cards than I can draw, the thing I like is I like to, after I'm done cutting on here, I'm going to run a marker around the exact cut lines so that I can see all my lines. It makes weeding so much easier to figure out where this is at. So the way you use this is on the back side, there's this little spot here where you can just press in and this opens up. Now I take my cap out, take my cap off, Drop it in here, and voila, I got a little marker. Now, we have another, uh, if you don't have a marker set, there. I would, I'm not sure I would recommend buying just this kit because it is, um, you have to buy their markers, you know, to use this. But Brother makes a universal pen holder so that you can use a bunch of different markers that you can um, buy or things like that to make it work. Now, there's no way you can you can't see this down here. I'm going to scoot this up a little bit so you can watch this. There's no way that you can see this down here. But I'm going to go and I'm going to take my knife out. I'm going to take my markers, marker, put it in place and lock it down. And now I need to I'll just do it this way. This might be easier. Now I'm going to it says finish cutting. Good, good for you, nice job. You did a great job today. So now we're gonna do select cut, and I'm gonna do draw, okay? And I'm just gonna hit start. And so now what it's gonna do is gonna go around the same thing, but now it's cutting, and now it's drawing right on top of that cut line. And so I'll be able to see where all my little pieces are, and it makes it a whole lot easier for weeding my project. By the way, as long as we're uh, waiting for this to finish up here, uh, if you want to uh, mark your calendars for August 19th, uh, I hope to have this up on my website and Facebook page by the end of this week, but we are going to be doing a fabric project with our scan and cut. And that will uh, that is something that we're going to all do together online. So in other words, I'll be able to do a show just like this, and we're going to learn and cut these things out together. And you'll be able to make this project at home the same time I'm making it here. That's probably going to be a two, an hour and a half to two hour class, maybe about an hour and a half, depending on how quick everyone's on it. And then we'll be able to actually have you cutting something. Now, if you if you want to take part of this class, there is going to be a kit charge and we will send you fabric that's already prepared. And we're going to have in some a little, few instructions with it. But then we're going to give the bulk of the lesson right here on class. Okay. So now I'm going to take this out. Now, do you see this? I'm going to take my mat off. You see that? Now I can see exactly where those pieces are. And I'm going to, uh, just to show you, scoot this back just a little bit. I'm going to, where's my pick? Here we go. I can actually take this and click right next to that. And there comes the piece. Now, a tip for weeding uh, is that a lot of times we want to get right on the line. You don't need to. If I get just on the inside of what I want and I can pull it away from the edge, and if I press hard enough, it actually pokes through it, and I don't have to spend as much time 
pulling it off. It just it goes much easier. Ask me how I know. I had a very detailed design I had to do for a search and rescue team, and I had almost uh, 150 shirts to do. And it I got it down so I could weed each piece in uh, each each logo uh, for for half a shirt. I could I could weed it in four minutes. I listened to a lot of audiobooks and stuff. So that's how we would do it. And then when I when I'm all ready, I take my spatula so I can get underneath the whole thing. Now see there, I cut through a little far because that left the piece behind. I, I could have gone back and I, I noticed that it was cutting a little bit deep on this. I could have gone back and instead of I instead of that one place where I had set it to one, I could have gone back and, and changed that back to zero and that would have been just perfect. But then I can weed this all out and it is all then ready to be uh, cut out. So I'm just going to do that here real quickly just so that you can see us do one project from start, from start to finish here. So just bear with me. So the project we're going to be doing, uh, I am going to actually be sending out a kit. You know, you'll, there'll be a little, there'll be a little fee, and then the kit's going to have all the materials and everything else you in it, so, in it, so you can make a um, twelve by twelve inch quilt block with a sunbonnet sue on it. This was a class that a lot of ladies wanted to take from me um, back in uh, March, and COVID hit. So instead of doing that, we're going to um, do it online virtually. And you get to follow along at home if you want to. I know some of you are doing this during, you're watching this <coughs> at work during the day. And that's, that's your business. Um, but if you want to do part of the class, the video will be available online. So that you can actually um, still get the kit and do it that evening when you get, when you get done. Now, normally, normally I would trim this off of here. There's excess over here. I would trim that off. But just for the sake of today, I don't have my scissors here. So we are going to just pretend that that is all we are going to do. Now, a lot of times what I will do is here is I'll tear this at this point and just work my way around because it's easier doing it this way. My staff doesn't like when I get busy on the scan and cut because I leave messes behind. Uh, all I, I try to get them all in the in the waste can, but you know how it is with glitter; it just goes everywhere. This stuff's not too bad because it's on a sticky carrier. But um, my daughter gives me that hairy eyeball that tells me that she still loves me, but she she questions that sometimes. So there you go. That's how easy it is to do it. Now, to give you an illustration for the other one, can you see any lines here? I have to turn so I can get the light in a certain direction to be able to get it to come off, or to be able to see where to pull this. And because this is a black, this because this is a dark blue, uh, it's it's I can't use a marker on it like I did before. But I wanted you to see how this works differently. Okay. Now, talk a little bit about your tools if you're going to be working with this. Um, the tools that they come with, they only send you a stylus for touching the screen, and your fingernail will work just fine. Um, sometimes if you press with your finger, we can get oil buildup on there, and it doesn't work too well. I do like using the stylus. And they send you this little plastic spatula. It's a plastic spatula. Um, this is not Teflon coated, so it's not a big deal. I was very happy when they came out with this metal one because it's much sturdier, you can get underneath it. The only downside to this one is that the tip is fairly sharp and you can actually scrape the uh, adhesive off your mat if you push really hard. But if you haven't eaten your spinach that morning, you know, you should be okay. And this is, I really like this much better. The other thing is a pick. And there's lots of different companies make picks out there, but this is kind of nice. It's got a little bit thicker handle. You know, so some of you who don't like the little tiny things, this is a nice little handle for you. Now, we do have these things um, separately as separate kit, but they do make a kit available that has a lot of your favorite tools in it. It has both of those in there, as well as a scraper uh, for, for scraping down your, um, when, when, you're, when you're putting your, your vinyl down on the mat to get all the air bubbles out, it's really nice for that and also putting the, the covering mat back on. 
comes with an extra stylus, comes with a reverse pinch tweezers. In other words, you, you squeeze it to uh, release it, and then you let go, and it grabs onto whatever you're having. So you don't have to be pinching quite so hard, and it has both these tools. These are $49.99. We sell, that's what we sell normally in our store. If you mention this video in the uh, till through Monday, we will let you have it for $40. I ha only have two in stock, but I will order some more. At least I think I only have two. I have to check our other um, storage supply, please. But that's very handy, nice tools. It comes in a nice zippered bag so you don't lose them, like I'm looking for mine all the time. And it's really handy that way. So let's talk a little bit. You know what? I got to put my mat, my cover back on because I'm just here just, um, just gabbing here. Um, so that's how we cut vinyl. And it's, it's basically the exact same process that we use for paper. We use it for fabric. We're actually do the fabric on the project. And it's the same process. You just have to set your knife blade. You have to set your, um, your half cut or whole cut, depending on what you're using. And you need to learn how to do this uh, very, very um, fluently from one type of material to the next. But it's not that hard. In fact, once I have the settings for my knife in here, I can go from paper to cork to vinyl without having to make hardly any adjustments. And so that's what's really handy about this, uh, this type of a setting on, on the new ones. The old ones work just as well. It's just we have to dial in that, that knife blade a little bit and we have to play with the tension or the pressure on the knife blade a little bit more as well. So that's what I kind of wanted to, to hopefully take some of the, the fear out of this for you so you can just play and have fun and do a lot of this stuff as well. Let's see here. I'm going to put my other blade back in here. Oh, you know what? I forgot. When you're done with this, don't do what I did the last time. I went and forgot to take my marker out of here, and you know what happened when you're in elementary and you left the markers out. Yeah, that happens with these ones too. And so you just got to be careful with that. Okay, I'm going to switch back over to the other screen, and we're going to talk a little bit more about Scan and Cut. Okay. Was that fun? You ready to take your machine out and play tonight and try and make a little project? By the way, we do sell heat transfer vinyl. We have about 60, almost 70 colors in stock of a bunch of different things. If you would like to see uh, a little bit more of that, you can let me know and I can take some more detailed pictures of them uh, and we can mail them out to you as well. We have some tubes so we can put that in there so it doesn't uh, get any kinks and folds in it. Ooh, let's see. What else are we going to talk about doing? Oh, yeah. So I mean, if you want to do a project with me, and we're going to do this virtually, where you're going to be able to um, respond through questions like we did, uh, like you're doing here today, and I'm going to teach the class in a slow way and going to be asking for feedback when you so that you can follow along and we can do this. That And the nice thing about it is all these videos that I'm putting up right now are recorded and they'll be left on our YouTube channel for usually at least a month. I don't like to leave them on there too long because it, it can start cluttering up um, my storage and some of the things there, but I, would like, I will do that. And so thus, if you kind of get behind, you can always scoop back up and, uh, and go over it again. But that's going to be a fun project because I want to be want you to be able to have a finished project and say, here's what I got. And we can do that as well. Okay. Uh, next, we're, we're, we're going to, our schedule coming up is that we're going to actually have another live show next week. It's going to be Wednesday afternoon. I don't know the exact time yet. Here's why. Normally every year this time, Brother calls us, all of us dealers, down to uh, Nashville, or last year was New Orleans. <laughs> that was a stinky place. Um, and down there, and we, we go there, and they have put on this big show, and they re unveil all the new machines, and they uh, tell us kind of where they're going with as a brother, as a company, and we get to um, play with the new machines and uh, do projects on them and lots of fun stuff. Next week... On Wednesday, they are unveiling those machines to all of us dealers. 
And so what I am going to do is I'm going to be doing a live show that afternoon. And I, um, I probably won't uh, be able to list that time until Wednesday morning. But I am hoping to be able to show you some of the really cool stuff that's coming out with Brother next week. I'm doing it a week early because I want to show you what's there. But the following week, I'm not going to be here. Nor, this was the year my wife was going to go along with me to this convention. And with COVID canceling the convention, we're instead taking a week to ourselves to celebrate our 20th anniversary in October. Uh, Amy and I have been married for 20 years, and I think she's on here. And um, she's she's watching today. Love you, sweetheart. And so we're we're taking a week just to get get away for the two of us. So I'm trying to schedule something before and after. So the week be, next week, August fifth, we'll be doing a live show in the afternoon, and we will be um, skipping a week, and then uh, the week after that, I believe it is the nineteenth, is when we'll be doing that Sunbonnet Sue quilt block. So if you're interested in that. Uh, Check back on our website and our Facebook page this weekend, and we will have that link up so that you can make that project with us. That's all I have. Oh, no, wait. Door prizes. Door prizes. Hey, well, here's the door prize. I appreciate all of you that have been watching this. And normally we give away one or two or three things, and we mail it out to some lucky person. This time, I want to give a door prize to every single one of you who watches this and comes in our door or drives up into our parking lot. If you watch this show and you say, Jay, I really appreciated that, can I have my free spool of thread? I will give every single one of you a free spool of thread up to $6 worth or $6 off of a more expensive spool. If you pull up into the parking lot and you call in and say, Jay, I, I'd like that spool. I like a spool of thread, and I'll ask you what kind of thread you want, and we'll bring some out, and you can pick it out. It's our little way of saying thank you for all of you. I'm not trying to string you along, or okay, that was a bad pun. But um, if you've if you've really appreciated this and enjoyed this, let us know, and that you can uh, you can come in the store and just let us know that you have watched this show. I will let that up until Monday night when we close on monday and um so you have from now until monday to come in and get your free spool thread and for saying as our way of saying thank you to all of you who have supported us you know yeah these are these are difficult times um i looked at our sales this year versus last year we're down about 10 percent. you know what it could be a lot worse and i thank you for those of you who have um stuck with us who've invested in us and we want to continue to do everything we can to support you in your sewing and in the craftiness that you have. So till next week, God blessing, God's blessings, and we'll see you then.